it's been a while since I've done a complete collection video, so I thought I would do my complete superhero movies collection. And I already regret it because the Marvel stack is a wobbling. Talk, shop, pop, movies. <laughs> Oh, hey there, this is Derek, the Convicted Cinephile, and if you're a Convicted Cinephile yourself, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel down below. On my channel, I like to talk, shop, and pop open, that is, movies and physical media, and I haven't had, like, crazy inspiration to do a new video lately. Is it obvious? Um, <laughs> outside of when I buy stuff. But I figured all this hubbub about these Marvel Mondo Steelbooks getting re-released, I bought a couple, I showed them off, I thought... I want to show off my complete superhero movie collection. I've done, like, steelbooks, Criterion's boutique labels, things of that sort. Uh, but superhero movies is kind of a vague term. And uh, I have a handful of superhero movies in here that I consider superhero movies because it's stuff I grew up with. That's kind of how I think of the superhero genre. Some will probably disagree with a few of these movies I have. Uh, but I have not only a Marvel stack... A DC stack, but I have a everything else stack, which is these other comic book company movies, movies of superhero-esque characters that may or may not have had their own comic books either before or after the movies came out, and then that handful of, like I was mentioning, weird ones that most of you probably won't agree with, but I don't care, because they kind of fit the superhero genre mold to me, so I'm going to get into the other ones first. I probably have to put these back as I go, <laughs> stack by stack, because, like I said, I regret even doing this. Um, there are no order whatsoever outside of stack. So, like I said, this is the everything else stack. And the first one I have in this pile, completely at random, is Kick Ass. Don't have the 4K yet, but I really enjoy Kick Ass. It's a fun movie. Uh, sequel, not so much, but I enjoy the first one. I highly recommend that if you have not seen it. And, of course, even though I don't like it very much, I have Kick-Ass 2. I think I bought it when I watched it. Like, that's just what I did. Uh, yeah, it was disappointing compared to the first one, I think. I center myself here. Uh, <laughs> but it's okay. You know, they have one. Might as well get the other one, right? And sort of along those lines, we got Kingsman, The Secret Service. Um... I couldn't even get through the sequel, to be honest, and I haven't watched the other ones yet. This one is pretty fun, though. Uh, I need to rewatch it. I've only watched it once. But that definitely falls into the other comic book genre pile. Uh, these next few, uh, we have The Men in Blacks, based on the Malibu comic. So I got Men in Black 1, Men in Black 2, which is easily my least favorite. And I have Men in Black 3, which I like a lot more than most people. Uh, I don't have the other one because it sucks. And I don't want to pay money for it. <laughs> so the, the real Men in Black trilogy I am a fan of. Uh, we have Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. I honestly can't remember what company released this. This is more of like a manga-style comic than a standard comic book. But yeah, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Fun movie. I didn't love it the first time I saw it, but then it grew on me and I liked it more each time. We have Sin City, classic. Uh, once again, not a fan of the sequel. I don't have that one. But this one, I really, really enjoy. I like watching them as the movie was released theatrically and even separated story by story. They're fun either way. Um, I have the Green Hornet movie, 3D one, so it's all cool looking. Uh, yeah, the Seth Green, Seth Green, Seth Rogen one. Uh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's as good as a Green Hornet movie starring and written by Seth Rogen could be, I guess. We have Hellboy. Hellboy 1. These are solid. Hellboy 2 is pretty good. I think I like two more than one. Depends on my mood, but I usually prefer this one. A lot of cool makeup in this one, even more so than the first. And then this god-awful piece of crap. But it has a cool steelbook that I got for like five bucks, so works for me. Hellboy from a few years ago. The Reversible Steelbook, as it's advertised. I remember I showed this up. <laughs> this was that one time one of my Walmarts actually had Steelbooks like a year and a half ago. So yeah, there's the other side of that. 
Cool Steelbook. That's pretty much the only reason I bought it. And I didn't already own it, so five bucks isn't bad. Here's a couple of weird ones. Ones that uh, people may not agree with, but it follows the mold. We have a superhero parody movie, obviously, Orgasmo. Anytime I can talk about Orgasmo, I'm going to do it. Written and directed by Trey Parker of South Park. He is a, a porn star superhero who becomes Orgasmo in real life and has to save the day. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, one I grew up on. Everyone loves this one who knows what it is. Blank Man with Damon Wayans. Like I always say, I didn't grow up with a ton of great superhero movies. The The superhero movie renaissance was decades away. So uh, I was happy to have a superhero movie like Blank Man, especially because I grew up watching In Living Color. So people I loved in a superhero movie, it's a winner to me. Uh, this is the one that's probably going to give me the most uh, debate <laughs> in the comments, if anyone cares enough. Uh, I want to put Ghostbusters in here. Because like I said, I didn't have a lot of superhero movies growing up. Ghostbusters, especially the original one, definitely fits that superhero genre mold. You have this group of people who, uh, this ragtag heroes, who have to have their little origin story. They have their own team. They have their own weapons. They have their own uniforms fighting evil. Um, that's a superhero movie to me. They may not have superpowers, but neither does Batman, so go fuck yourself. <laughs> Last but not least in this very gray area. Well, this isn't a gray area. Definitely a superhero movie. Just not a comic book movie. And that is Meteor Man, another one I watched on repeat as I grew up, like Blank Man. I love this movie. I rented it way too many times as a kid. Highly recommend Meteor Man. Most people won't like it, but I do. And then... I included the Conan movies, because there are Conan the Barbarian comics. I don't think they existed before this movie, and if they did, they weren't related to it, I believe. But it is a character, and it is a superhero-esque character, who did have a comic book at one point, so I'll include that. It's not all strictly comic book. This is a comic serial, Flash Gordon. Gotta include Flash Gordon. One of these days I'll open that and watch it, I swear. <laughs> another one that's kind of in that gray area is robocop who also had comic books at one point after the movie of course but he follows that or superhero origin story arc as perfect as any actual comic book movie i'll put it that way he has the bitter villains who take him down and he comes back and gets his revenge and yeah it's a he's a superhero robocop is a superhero it's a superhero movie and last but not least, because it's on the bottom of the sack, because it's the biggest, another one of my favorites, the Toxic Avenger Collection. Mainly the first one, because you gotta have that superhero origin story, as I always keep saying. That's like the key to making something a superhero movie to me. It's gotta fit that superhero origin movie. But this, you know, this is obviously a guy who was mutated by chemicals and got superpowers. Nothing's more comic book superhero movie than that. So those are my others pile so let me know if you've seen any or all of these which one you love which one you hate which one you don't think is a superhero movie because you know it's okay if you're wrong all right next i'm going to do my dc comics piles i had to separate it because they were too tall uh, so we'll start off with the classic batman series from the 1960s Another thing I grew up watching. I love this show. It's fun. I like watching it with my... Oh, God, it almost fell apart. Cut, cut that out. Something I love watching with my kid. Uh, <laughs> only three seasons, but this is back when you had like 84 episodes a season. So, you know, you know that means something. Next, I have the Superman Blu-ray collection. I really only kept this because it has Superman Returns in it, which is not in that uh, the 4K set or what have you. So the only reason I really have this still is for Superman Returns. This god-awful piece of trash, Suicide Squad, uh, I only have because I found it at Goodwill Sealed. Uh, but yeah, that sucks. And, uh, <laughs> and then the slightly better James Gunn Suicide Squad. I really need to rewatch it. I still wasn't the biggest fan. It's kind of like a Guardians of the Galaxy movie, except I didn't care about any of the characters in it, really. So it sort of failed on that for me. But it was still at least fun enough to watch and eventually rewatch. Swamp Thing. Yeah, that's a DC comic. <laughs> I forgot. I remember it was a comic book, but I couldn't remember if it was DC or Marvel for some reason. But yeah, I got the Swamp Thing 4K. 
Still need to grab the rest of these, but Swamp Thing is a DC Comics character. V for Vendetta is a DC Vertigo movie. Uh, this is a great movie. I love V for Vendetta. Not as much as I like, you know, when it came out damn near 20 years ago, but it's still good. Uh, Zack Snyder's Watchmen, pretty much the only Zack Snyder movie I really like. And having said that, it's still been about 10 years since I've watched it. Uh, but I liked it a lot when I <laughs> came out. I watched it quite a bit. We have Wonder Woman, the decent Wonder Woman. Uh, not a huge fan of the DCEU in general, which you could probably tell already, or you will be able to tell by the end of this video. Uh, but Wonder Woman's one of the better ones. I have Man of Steel in 3D. One of the other ones I like more than most, but still not an amazing movie. Cool little lenticular cover, though. Very boring artwork. I always thought it was like the most boring picture they could have chosen for the 3D image, but what are you going to do? I got Shazam on 4K, mainly because I was able to get it for like three bucks, so why not? Um, probably my least favorite <laughs> DCEU movie. One of them. Uh, Batman vs. Superman. This movie is just a cluster of horrible, horrible mistakes. Onto some good Batman. We got Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises. Mr. Tim Talks Talkies was a a sweetheart and actually sent me all those. So that was nice to have. And thanks again, Tim. I have the Green Lantern Steel Book. This I got from Tony, Basement Blues. This is available at all of your local big lots for, <laughs> for a reasonable price. Uh, Batman, the Lego Batman movie. This is one of the best Batman movies ever. And it's a children's movie. But seriously, it's a solid flick. And then. We got the Batman Anthology, the classic Keaton and Schumacher, Tim Burton Batman series. Uh, yeah, I haven't upgraded these, but they're great. I probably will at some point. I love Batman Forever and Batman and Robin more than anyone should. <laughs> because of the ones that I was like old enough to appreciate and see in theaters and loved them. I saw this Batman Returns in theaters too, but wasn't quite at that age where it was like perfect yet. But obviously, objectively, the first two movies are better but I have a soft spot for the not-as-good-two movies. That's just me. I've got a few more DC ones to go. Had to cut to put the rest away. Uh, I do have the Steelbook for The Batman. Awesome movie. I wish it was a little shorter so I could just rewatch it more often, but it's I like it how it is. It doesn't need to be shorter, but I would watch it more often if it was. Let's put it that way. Um, I don't love this movie, but I do love this release, so I grabbed it super cheap from Half Price Books. Aquaman... <laughs> lenticular blu-ray cover very neat i have the batman movie or batman the movie from the original tv series signed by mr adam west himself on dvd once again love this movie grew up watching this stuff super fun time i grabbed the flash series i thought i'd grab that because it was like 10 bucks something i used to watch on and off as a kid so once, eventually, I'll rewatch this <laughs> with my kid at some point. But he, he wanted to grab it when I found it, so I thought that was kind of funny. And last but not least, I'm not going to undo the whole dang thing, because it's big, and I've already done a video doing that. So if you want to see the whole thing, you know, maybe I'll link the video at the end. This gorgeous Christopher Reeve Superman Steelbook Collection. All four of these are amazing. And by the uh, four, I mean, like, the Steelbooks are amazing. Uh, the movies... Yeah, kind of like Batman. The first two are objectively the best, far and away. Three and four I have a stop, soft spot for because I grew up with them. I have a Superman 4 Bad Movie Bible video. In fact, that's how good that one is. So go watch that if you want to see some Superman 4 uh, glory. But yeah, Superman 3 is weird. It's got Richard Pryor in it for no other reason than why not. And uh, Superman 1 and 2 are arguably two of the greatest superhero movies ever made. So those are my DC movies. On to the biggest final stack all my marvel stuff i was more of a marvel kid growing up so that's why i have the most of that plus i mean they've just been pumping out the movies like crazy these last 20 years so you know everybody wins right so these are the phase one and two blu-ray collections they never released a phase three set in america which pisses me off because i wanted them all to match so now i have to go back and buy them all individually which <laughs> is annoying because, you know, as a collector back in these days, I bought every one of these as they came out. And then when they released this set, I got it eventually. I didn't get it like day one or anything. So I didn't need my individuals anymore. So I didn't buy any Phase 3 movies as they were coming out. Knowing, of course, 
they would release all of them in a set. No. I got the Phase 1 Tesseract briefcase release. Um, it does light up and make noise if the battery works, but it's old. So, it doesn't. It's like ten, over 10 years old now, this thing. It's crazy. So, she opens up. There's a bunch of files in there. The Tesseract that makes noise and lights up, like I said, if the battery works, which it doesn't. The movies are on either side there. So, you got your original Iron Man, the Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Captain America, Thor, and Avengers in here. And little dossiers for each character. That's what that is. Show them quick just because... So that's like a special feature disc, the shield thing. Iron Man 2. Iron Man. And then you have Incredible Hulk. Captain America. First Avenger. Thor. And then the first Avengers. So that's what this set looks like on the inside. Phase 2 is a little more awkward to display. It's smaller, but somehow more awkward. So it's from Guardians of the Galaxy. It comes with the thingy. The little orb from the first movie. Clicks open and lights up, like as if there were the purple gem in there. There is no actual gem, though. kind of thought that was disappointing. And then it sits on the base with all the movies in there, so they're in little sleeves, kind of like the first set. I don't know if these are all in order, of course, but you got Iron Man 3, Ant-Man, Winter Soldier, Dark World, Avengers Age of Ultron, Guardians of the Galaxy, of course. That's a special features disc with Thanos on it, and I think that's everything, yep. And there's a little separate envelope dossier thing for this set, but it just, like, it's not in here at all. It, like, just sits on top of it. So, the uh, first package was definitely thought through better. Onto the normal shaped things, more or less. Uh, once again, no order whatsoever. Those phase sets make this a complete cluster, uh, other than they're all Marvel movies. Uh, we have Thor, Love and Thunder on 4K. Yeah, I need to try to watch this again. Wasn't a huge fan of it in theaters, but I got it crazy cheap, so why not? Plus, like I said, I'm trying to get all of them at some point. Still got a lot of catching up to do, especially with the Phase 4 movies. Um, classic stuff. I got the Tom Hardy Venom. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I don't even like these. Just, once again, got them crazy cheap. Venom. Uh, 2, uh, what the hell is it called? Let There Be Carnage. Yeah, I love Tom Hardy, and I love Woody Harrelson, but these Sony Spider-Man movies are just the worst. Uh, I got the Wolverine Best Buy exclusive. This one's kind of cool. This was the second Wolverine movie. There's a lot of crap in here, but I'll just kind of show off. Where's the cover that up so it tries to focus. That's all the innards. Who wants to focus on that instead of my hand? So it comes with cards. It's like four discs. Got an uncut version of the movie. Not a bad movie. Not a great movie. Not a bad movie. It's probably the one I watched the least because Logan is definitely better and X-Men Origins Wolverine is so bad I love it. So <laughs> the Wolverine is so okay that I barely ever watch it. I got the X-Men Trilogy. This is the original X-Men 1, 2, and 3 set. Standard Blu-ray set there, but gotta love them, right? <laughs> the ones that kind of started it all, but not really. All right, there's X-Men Origins Wolverine. X-Men First Class, which I believe was going to be X-Men Origins Magneto, and then I think they just evolved into this movie, which everyone's probably grateful for. X-Men Days of Future Past, this is the Target exclusive. I had this already, but I got this version of it from a buddy of mine, so the 3D one. Cool Sentinel packaging there. I think that's all the X-Men movies, I don't remember, we'll find out. I don't have Apocalypse, I don't have Dark Phoenix, I don't have that New Mutants movie. Eventually, I'll maybe get them if I can find the Blu-rays cheap enough, but they're, uh, uh, like I said, X-Men Origins Wolverine I can watch because it's so hilariously bad. The other ones are just kind of a pain to sit through, uh, <laughs> to be honest. All right, next, one of the one of the greats, Howard the Duck, the first Marvel movie of all time. Respect. And it's not as bad as people say it is. I don't care what they say. Another movie that's not as bad as people think it is. Ang Lee's Hulk. Still the best Hulk movie ever made. I don't care what people say. It is the best. It's the only one that takes the character seriously, but a little too seriously, which is the only problem with the movie. But how Hulk's my favorite, so how he acts in this movie and how he powers up and keeps getting angrier and bigger and stronger throughout the movie, that's how Hulk should be. That's why I like this one so much. He's not just like, I'm Hulk now. All right, Logan, 
tying in there somewhere. Logan's great. Old School Punisher with Dolph Lundgren on DVD. I don't think this has a Blu-ray in the States at least, but there is one out there somewhere. Uh, but I'm fine finding this at Goodwill and having it in the collection. R.I.P. Uh, Louis Gossett Jr., by the way. He's in this. Punisher, 2004, Lionsgate, Steelbook. Love it. Punisher Warzone, R.I.P. this guy as well. That's too bad. I I feel bad now. I can't remember his name. Ray Stevenson. I want to say Ray Winstone. Like, that's not right, though. Ray Stevenson. He's a damn good Punisher. I need to rewatch this. I wasn't a huge fan of the movie, but I thought he looked perfect for the... As far as, like, an adaptation of the Punisher Warzone style, he looks exactly like the comic book. So, kudos to him on that one. We got the Tom Holland Spider-Mans. It took me a while to finally get this, so I'd still wrap. But Spider-Man Homecoming on 4K. No Way Home with that weird little slip. And then I got the Walmart No Way or the Far From Home. Did I say it right? I don't even remember. No Way Home with the Walmart slip. That one's cool. Into the Spider-Verse, another one I finally got more recently. Haven't gotten the second one yet. I will at some point. Spider-Man Trilogy on 4K. The same Raimi Spider-Mans. Even Spider-Man 3, which is not great. I still really like it. But the first two are... Like Superman 1 and 2, Spider-Man 1 and 2 are arguably like the two best Marvel movies, in my opinion. I think they're just perfect. And then I got Blade on 4K... Gotta love Blade. The real first Marvel movie to start the comic book movie trends back in 1998. Just didn't make as big of a splash as X-Men, but I saw Blade in theaters. I was excited for Blade in theaters. And I loved Blade in theaters. At the wee old age of, I think, 13. I just turned 13 when it came out, like, a couple days beforehand. Here's the next pile. Last but not least, we got more Blades. I had the trilogy, so I kept that, since I only have Blade <laughs> 1 on 4K. Blade 2 is getting a 4K, uh, I think, at some point soon. Blade 3 is not good. I'll probably just keep this to have it in the collection, but I would buy Blade 2 on 4K because Guillermo del Toro is awesome, and Blade 2 is debatably the best one. If not, it's at least pretty similar in quality to the first. I have the first Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange, and the Multiverse of Madness. Um, I like this one a lot more than probably every other movie in Phase 4 besides um, Far From Home or No Way Home, if that's Phase 4. I can't remember anymore. There's too damn many of them in Phase 3 and 4 now. Uh, but I like this one. It's Sam Raimi. Feels like a Sam Raimi movie more than I thought it would. And uh, hashtag BBC. Deadpool 2. I don't think he's got out of order, I guess. But Deadpool 2. Very excited for Deadpool 3. That's another one of these reasons I wanted to do this. Because I finally have some more comic book movies coming out that I'm looking forward to. And I can't wait to have sex with those popcorn buckets. Uh, Deadpool, the original on 4K. I think this is the first 4K I ever bought. Before I even had a 4K player. Daredevil? The Ben Affleck one, which I like. Part of it is nostalgia. But <laughs> but the director's cut isn't bad. I don't think the other one's bad. It's just not great. But the director's cut is better. It has an entire subplot that was cut out of the theatrical cut. That makes it a pretty solid movie. It has a lot more of his uh, lawyery, detective-y uh, guff in there. Plus it has Coolio. Um, on to the greatest Marvel movie of all time. The one no one's ever seen. The unreleased Roger Corman Fantastic Four movie on a DVD that still kind of works. I need to get a new bootleg of this on Blu-ray so I can watch it some more. They just need to release this. <laughs> okay. They would make more than enough money to get the budget back that they wasted making this movie. If they just released it on home video, on Blu-ray, even just a regular Blu-ray would be fine. It doesn't have to be on 4K or anything. It would be amazing if it was, but it won't. And there's a really good documentary about the making of this movie called Doomed, you should all watch. I think you can watch it on YouTube. So I would do that if I was you. I've watched it a couple times. And then I have the Fox Fantastic Four movies. They're okay. I don't watch them very often. Uh, I have this because, once again, I found it on clearance at uh, like Goodwill or Half Price Books. Fan 4 stick. Haven't had the, the guts to open it and watch it yet. Still sealed. I have Ghost Rider with Nicolas Cage. Still need to grab the second one, which I haven't seen. I saw this one in theaters, and it's not great. Uh, I have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 on 4K. Target exclusive 4K. You got that at the Half Price Books. Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp I have. Focus, damn you. On 4K. There we go. A little better. The Amazing Spider-Man movies, they're in backwards order because of the stack, but <laughs> Spider-Man 2, 
Terrible movie. So bad. And uh, The Amazing Spider-Man, both of them in 3D. This one's okay, but I still don't ever want to watch it. Because the Sam Raimi ones and the Tom Holland ones are just infinitely better. Uh, I love Andrew Garfield the Spider-Man. Just everything else about the movie's shitty. Sorry, but it's true. Um, got more recent Best Buy Steel Books here. Got the Wakanda Forever one I grabbed solely because <laughs> I grabbed it for 10 bucks when Best Buy was going under. My recent pickup, the Doctor Strange Mondo Steelbook from Walmart. This thing is gorgeous. I did a full unboxing of that recently. Same goes for the original Guardians of the Galaxy. So I have a Blu-ray and a 4K of this one. But it is, like I said in that video, like top five easy. This Captain America movie. Ah, oh, I love it so much. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the 1990 Captain America direct-to-video masterpiece. Uh, yeah. the When I saw the poster for this movie, it looked just like that. S.H.I.E.L.D. That's all it was, was the poster. Yeah, the disc. The disc art essentially was the poster. At Mr. Movies growing up. Oh, I almost shit a brick, a little four-year-old me. Uh, <laughs> but this movie, obviously, it's not great. It's no Chris Evans' Captain America but it is it is a so bad it's good superhero movie. I love it. Red Skull is Italian for some reason. It's great. <laughs> On to the <laughs> Black Panther. Uh, yeah, good Best Picture nominee. Not as good as the other movies that came out that year from Marvel, in my opinion. But it's a solid flick. And last but not least, I have the Avengers... Assembled Steelbook Collection. Uh, this was a Best Buy exclusive, I believe. And I found it at Half Price Books for a very reasonable price. So that's why I finally grabbed it. So I do have at least all four of the Avengers on 4K. Which is why I didn't get that Avengers Mondo Steelbook, because I already have this one. But yeah, very cool set. Before, I'm just going to say it, because I just realized I forgot it. I also have Joker <laughs> on 4K. I'm not going to bother going to get it. I have the 4K of Joker. But beyond that, I think I got them all. That is my entire superhero movie collection from Marvel to DC to everything else. Yeah, what do you think? Which ones are your favorites? Which ones are so bad you love to watch them? Because I have a few of those in here, like I said. If you haven't seen the 1990 Captain America movie, do yourself a favor and sit through that. Watch it with some friends. Have some brew chachos. It's a good time. Once again, my name is Derek, the Convicted Cinephile. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Fuck. Shop. Pop. Movies.